Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV in a new edition of our online interview series. Today, we want to talk to Alpha Lithium and Brad Nickel, the CEO, is here with us. Hey, Brad, good morning to Canada. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Thanks, Jochen. You look fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, I tried my best and it looks like it's working. <laughs> yeah, it was not an easy way the last six months, but I made it. But yeah. more important, we want to talk about lithium. Lithium is hot. And uh, interestingly, we saw a nice rebound already. If I look at uh, the lithium price, the spot price in uh, in China, we came up from 163,000 uh, yuan, uh, now up to over 207,000 within like eight, nine days. So that tells me also that really Things are moving, things are going forward. And last but not least, of course, the Alchem and Livent merger, which creates an $11 billion company. I mean, that is really astonishing, uh, but not astonishing in that sense, but astonishing that it, things are moving now so fast. And I think they are also your neighbors. So... Hmm. Polsco is a big neighbor around you. Several companies were taken over already. What's going on? Are you next? <laughs> well, that's the uh, that's the million dollar, well, maybe maybe billion dollar question. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it could be. We don't know. <laughs> we're in the we're in the right area for sure. Um, and I mean, that's a great place to start if you if you don't mind me jumping in too. But I really think that, uh, I, and I've said it publicly many times, uh, that we are there are many people that are approaching us. They are very interested in our assets, um, and we've been entertaining. I'll call it unsolicited uh, information or requests mm -hmm. for information and requests mm -hmm. for, you know, I just, I'll call them interest in our assets, um, an unprecedented amount. And so that's, that's been the way for uh, a small number of months now. And Hey, we'll see how it turns out. Like you point out, we are in the middle of a very, very hot part of not just Argentina, but of the world um, where the, the lithium triangle where we sit holds about 60% of the world's resources. Uh, Argentina produces the second most amount of lithium per year. You know, we're right in the heart of it. And then within, if I narrow right down, within about 60 kilometers of us, we have, we have uh, Pozuelos Pastos Grandes, which just sold, it closed in October of last year for almost $1 billion. Uh, Millennial Lithium is there, POSCO is there. Mm. Alchem Livent is, is their next door neighbors. They are less than 10 kilometers away from us. You know, so we are absolutely in the right spot. And, uh, you know, I can't, uh, I don't want to say things that I shouldn't, but yeah, we're very excited about what the future holds. Super, yeah. And also, I'm a shareholder of the company. I want to disclose that also, but I'm long-term shareholder already. And because I'm also totally convinced, especially as we know that POSCO is your direct neighbor. And I mean, that's a, about a 20, 20, 30 billion dollar company and they have deep pockets. And I could imagine that something is really going on there also. Well, so let's talk about your pilot plant. Uh, because the last time I looked at it, it was like over 50% uh, was done. So what's going on? there when do you expect theoretically uh, given the fact that nobody would buy you by now we don't know that yet yeah but let's 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 take it as uh, um, as it would work all in the in the optimal way yeah um, would you start production like in third quarter this year no uh, I mean yes we will we were we are going to start production in third quarter this year that's the intention we're so we're more well well over halfway finished the pilot plant today and it's exciting for us because you know we have we started about two and a half years ago we hired the best chemistry experts lithium brine chemistry experts on the planet hands down they've worked for sqm they worked for or cobre they worked for live end these guys have sampled They've t literally taken samples from every lithium brine solar in South America, not just Argentina, but Chile, Bolivia. They've been all over South America. They're, they're very renowned for their expertise. They've helped design production systems. So DLE production systems, uh, right from start to finish for all of these major companies as well as for small companies. But they're very hands-on. Like I say, they've been in every solar in South America, taking samples, testing, and so we brought them on about two and a half years ago, and we said to them, and this was right at the time when we drilled our first well, we said, look, we know we have lithium, 
we're going we choose today two and a half years ago we choose dle technology you know, we'd rather recover 95 percent of the lithium through dle than spend all the money go through all the environmental problems and uh, and only recover 40 percent if we use evaporation ponds the traditional method mm -hmm. so we chose a good technology a dle technology from the beginning we chose the right team from the beginning and the exciting thing is now two and a half years later after creating something in the lab that is fantastic we get to now take that lab to the to the field an industrial scale and it's what's interesting for me or what's exciting for me is that 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 uh, pilot plant is is it's an extension of the lab it's fully flexible it's built in modules we have the ability to to change things as we go. So we see that we get a little better result doing this. Well, let's do more of that. Let's tweak it. Let's see if we push it too far, what happens? And so we'll dial it back. So we're gonna create these parameters of operation that not only will feed, uh, it feed into our economic assessment, but they'll tell us practically and pragmatically what the best operating parameters are, what gives us the longest life, what gives us the most efficiency, what gives us the lowest cost. And we get to play with all of these things on our pilot plant. And that's going to start in probably, I'm going to say, July, you, you know, sometime in Q3, we'll say. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, another big thing is re um, fresh water, because this is what is needed um, for production. And of course, we are now talking about a pilot plant, but I think the plants let's say for the next years is to establish a 50,000 ton LCE production. So that's a real big commercial plant. Yeah. Um, do you have for that enough fresh water? Is that all secured? What does it look like? Yeah. So, I mean, we mentioned at the top of this that there has been a lot of inbound interest in the asset. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that a lot of companies key in on very quickly is they realize <laughs> how much fresh water we have, number one, and number two, the quality of that fresh water. It's incredibly fresh, uh, as one might expect, but there are I think it's, it's drinking water, right? That's Correct. what I read in your That's your right. I've, I've, uh, we, had, we had some people visiting us on site and they said, well, you know, you call it fresh water, but is it really fresh water? And one of our engineers grabbed a glass and said, absolutely, watch this. And, and <laughs> you, know, you drank it coming right out of the ground. Wow. So, so, you know, it's, so it's a, an incredibly fresh, low total dissolved solids water. Mm -hmm. So it's, it classifies as potable water, um, not industrial potable, not industrial uh, or industrial use. It's potable water. That's according to the total dis dissolved solids. So it's fantastic, which helps mm -hmm. the process. When you start using fresh water, if you have a lot of dissolved solids in the fresh water, well, it's 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 going to make it harder to, for that water to serve its pur purpose during the production process. Mm -hmm. So we have fantastic quality fresh water. But the most important thing is the actual amount of fresh water that we have. We have, I think the way to describe it is we have three collection basins. We've done a recharge study on only one of those three basins. That recharge study says that we have 500 or we're able to take out of the, the ground 583 cubic meters of water per hour. Mm -hmm. So it's a, if you, I, I can't think of the context of that or what, how to make that on a practical basis. It is a lot. <laughs> it is a lot of water and it's enough water on its own to support 50,000 tons per year. In fact, it will support, we've done some calculations in our internal estimates, is that it will support about 80,000 at a minimum uh, tons per year of production. So we're only planning at the moment 50,000. Our internal models have been built for 50,000 tons per year in two phases, 25 and 25. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the fresh water from only one of the three basins is enough to support more than that. If, if all three basins were exactly the same, we would have enough fresh water to support almost 250,000 tons per year of production. Uh, so it's, and this is in a, an area, I said this in a press release a while ago, this area is drier than the Sahara Desert. Fresh water is an absolute premium. And if you look at all of the other companies that are, that are uh, around us, um, and for example, that Pozuelos Pastos Grandes, <coughs> excuse me, so that, that, um, 
um, that operation, they're planning on uh, producing, I, I think it's 40,000 tons per year. That's their planned stated uh, nameplate production capacity, but it's limited by the fresh water that they have. So they would love to increase it, but they can't. Um, and that's the case, not just, I'm not just picking on Pozuelas, um, all over South America, certainly all over Argentina. So the, the amount of fresh water we have, there's there's not been another Salar anywhere in Argentina that can make that statement. So we're very, very lucky in that regard. Okay, then let's talk about Hombre Muerto Salar, which is the second project you have. Yeah, uh, let, Let's assume for a second you have... Tolisha may be sold. We don't know what happens. Yeah, but let's assume for a second. Would that be something that you can also develop the same way? Will you move on? And what are the plans for that? Yeah, um, you know, hypothetically, if we move on from Tolijar, um, obviously our, our next asset is Ombre Muerto. We've talked a lot about that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, again, at the top of the interview, you mentioned Alchem and, uh, and Livent mm -hmm. merging. We have POSCO. So POSCO is, is literally our next door neighbor. They're building today a 10,000 ton per year plant uh, as a pilot plant. So that's not the commercial plant. That's just the pilot plant. They're, wow. they're on their way to building a 100,000 ton per year uh, facility, uh, commercial facility. <clears throat> um, that won't be producing in the next year, I, I don't think. But, you know, they're, they're, they're really, really uh, ramping up aggressively on the production side, and they should. They're in the world's greatest Salar. They have the best quality brine to start with, so it makes a lot of sense to go down that road. And that's why we're so excited about uh, our position in Ombre Muerto. David Guerrero, who some of the listeners may have, they may have heard of him, they may have listened to him. David Guerrero is our country manager in Argentina, um, president of Argentina Operations. David was previously the president of, of Galaxy in Argentina. Um, Galaxy is now part of Alchem, which will soon be part of Livent. But uh, Galaxy used to own the land that is now POSCO's. And David and his team have drilled in that area many, many times. They know exactly what to expect. Uh, it's the reason that we went after these assets in uh, in Ombre Muerto very aggressively, and we continue to do so. We hope to be doubling our land base in the in the future. So, you know, it's a it's a very exciting area. We're very excited to be moving our drilling rigs from Tolijar to Ombre Muerto, and the listeners should start to see some news in that regard relatively soon. Um, but yeah, Ombre Muerto is the next thing. And everything that we've done in incredible, uh, I'll call it efficiency, or in a very short mm -hmm. period of time in Tolijar is going to be, that's our intention anyway, is to, to repeat it at Ombre Muerto. And so mm -hmm. I would expect that we'll spend the next year or so drilling uh, in Ombre Muerto, uh, adding land in Ombre Muerto, ultimately producing a resource estimate specifically for, for Ombre Muerto. Um, and then we have a... After Ombre Muerto, we, I mean, we plan to do the same kind of thing um, that we're, we were hoping to do in Tolijar. We have another asset as well. I mean, there's a lot of running room and, and we're just going to keep repeating what we've been able to do and what we've done as a team incredibly successfully. So, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Super, perfect. Um, then, of course, so things look very good, I would say. By the way, what is cash in the bank? Just to remind us. Yeah, today the company has $35 million in cash, um, more than enough runway for easily for, I'll, I'll say, two years, um, because that's about as far as, as we like to look uh, when we're, when we're mm -hmm. planning exploration, but easily we can fund the exploration for two years or more. Okay, super. Um, then I would love to get from you uh, at the end of the interview also your view on the lithium market itself. Uh, we just saw, for example, the new numbers um, for the first quarter in the US. I think uh, the sales of electric vehicles was up 39% to the highest level ever. And um, I mean, this this does not coincide really with the lithium price we saw on the spot price, but that's a different price than the one with the contracts uh, which are done. But what is your view on lithium, I mean, what 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 is your thinking on the whole market itself, and where do you see the next two three years? Yeah, well, uh, you you hit the nail on the head. The 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 press like to report on what's 
relatively easy for them to find and that data is in the spot price and it's not even that easy to find you you don't just jump on google and see it even that quickly so you have to do some digging and do some research um, but that spot price represents a very tiny percentage of the overall production of lithium in, globally in, in the market mm -hmm. and, and it's those long-term privately no negotiated privately held contracts mm -hmm. that really are the meaningful price and as as the spot price was falling um, and we've seen that now for a few months but it now has has hit a floor that floor by the way is well above the, it's probably close to double the price that all the analysts use it's it's way more than double our the price that we use internally in our models is less than what analysts use uh, by about 30 percent we're, we're about 30 percent lower anyways the spot price now has hit this floor that is more than double the price mm -hmm. of what analysts use but nonetheless the spot price is not what's important if you want an indication of what some of those private negotiated contracts are and what that pricing is well read livens uh, financial statements, read Alba Marley's statements, um, you know, look at these bigger companies that provide or, or produce the, a lot of the world's uh, lithium. And that gives you a much better indication of what the price is doing. Nonetheless, we believe that the floor has been set and that floor is at uh, around 40,000 US dollars uh, a ton, more or less. Um, it's extremely high uh, compared to the actual costs full cycle costs, even including capital, not just operating costs. So, you know, if the floor is $40,000 a ton, fantastic. Uh, it never had any business being at $80,000 a ton to begin with, but people got pretty excited by that. So, yeah, I think from a cost perspective, we watched uh, a lot of the manufacturing companies erode their, their inventories. Mm -hmm. So inventories are now hitting lows and they're starting to repurchase. And yeah, I think we'll see a nice run. But but today the market is not as mature as you would expect from say an oil or you know other mm -hmm. commodities, where uh, the, the where the price actually approaches the, the highest marginal cost. That's not the case today. It, it happens to be that I believe that the highest marginal cost of lithium production is uh, lipidolite. Probably in some parts of China, there's lipid lipidolite in other parts of the world. But that price is probably going to be about forty thousand dollars a ton to extract. It's not environmentally. It's it's not very friendly at all. But that forty thousand dollars per ton, in my view, is a long term price, and and that's what we look at. You know, in our models, uh, well, I'll say we used eighteen thousand dollars a ton in our financial internal financial models, because we care about what the price is for the next forty years on average, not what it is for the next forty months or forty weeks. <laughs> Or 40 days. Yeah, so the it's a bit price, longer term. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, but that's that's my view on pricing. I think that uh, the market, we're really starting to see some excitement in the market. And I can speak to that firsthand. Uh, very excited about that. So Alchem and Livent, that was just, you know, I hate to call um, you know, a double-digit billion-dollar uh, deal a, a drop in the pond, but I do believe... That's the first of, of many transactions that we'll see specifically in the Argentina portion of the lithium triangle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Super. Brett, thank you very much for your time. Um, fantastic. Things look good, I would say. And yeah, we wish you all the best and a very good hand with uh, Tolija and also Ombre Merto, of course. And uh, I would say very simple, make us all rich. That would be great. <laughs> 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 Spoken like a true capitalist. I love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> Super. Thank you very much, Brad. Thank yeah, you. ladies and gentlemen, that was Brad Nickel, the CEO of Alpha Lithium. And you heard it, a great company within the Lithium Triangle. And there's really a lot going on. And uh, yeah, I must say... Um, it looks to me like if I look at the stock price the last uh, six, seven days, there's something uh, cooking in the oven, as we say, and uh, probably something is going on. We heard it already several times. There is interest from the outside for Tolija. There's interest maybe in the whole company. We saw the merger with Liven and Alchem. So there is a lot going on. The wake-up call is here for Lithium. And I would suggest you check out this fantastic company with uh, their two projects and uh, I'm a shareholder already. Maybe you are next. So thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Sister.